Hey, all Iron here, and we're back playing Gold Rush the game. Um, so I know we're a little bit late on getting some more episodes of this going. I apologize. There's been a lot of other games I've been uh, hitting up and trying to get recorded. Um, and also Gold Rush requires a little bit of um, time commitment to it to kind of get the money flowing to get to the next part. So it gets hard to kind of make episodic content while you're in the middle of this kind of lull of just grinding that is just digging out, you know, processing the pay dirt and getting more gold and competing, uh, repeating the process. So, hey, I'm really sorry about that. But I promise, you know, all I've been doing is just digging. Definitely have not had a ton of issues to deal with uh, while we've been doing this digging. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely haven't, you know, drove a little too fast and caused our dump truck to have some issues on hills. Um, don't worry, everyone was safe after that accident. I uh, definitely didn't break the hose on my fuel tank and have to fix it really quickly while fuel was spilling out of it. Uh, we did not break our excavator and have to fix all the hoses on that as well. A lot of hoses, as you could tell, and definitely didn't break the trommel too. So yeah, there's been a lot going on. I've been recording for the like... um a good five days I think it took me to kind of get this all recorded and uh prep just for editing and voiceover so uh let's jump in and kind of show you guys what I've been doing and all the fun I've been having so down in the south of the old Arnold claim here there's actually a nice uh spot this square basically of spots that we can dig out and it turns out there's actually a lot of gold in this area here let me show you really quick so some of these spots actually have you know the highest uh density of gold uh in them according to our map so i've been really focusing on these areas trying to get as much gold as i can per scoop uh per yard basically just to you know kind of keep things moving forward quickly so high level basically is that we dig out these sites uh throw it in the dump truck take the dump truck to the wash plant dump the dirt in after everything's kind of been going for a while when the mats are about 100 percent full we shut down the wash plant we get all the mats out we get all the buckets with pay dirt inside of it out and we take it over to our um, cleanup center clean it all out get the gold and magnetite out and then you know work from there either making bars out of it or holding on to it um so that's really the kind of cycle that we're going through right now and that'll be the cycle through the rest of the game it'll be just kind of the process of digging washing uh getting the gold and magnetite out and then repeating the process except for you know upgrading equipment uh hiring new workers that kind of uh adds new things to the game as you're playing so as i've been rambling on you kind of notice i've been digging and actually i'm showing some footage here of me now taking the truck over to the wash plant and working on getting everything dumped in and ready for processing. So let's talk about the worker system a little bit. Uh, what happens is as we own a wash plant, every single day, one or two workers might want to work for us. They put an application in and then we look at it and decide to hire them or not. We just pay the workers a flat fee per day. And what we do is we get assigned them to a piece of equipment that they quote unquote specialize in. You can see here, Daryl Benford is our first employee that we hired. Um, his qualifications are for the shaker. And at level one, he provides us a performance bonus. At level two, he reduces some of the malfunctions to the shaker. So he kind of helps keep everything durable. The longer we keep these employees, uh, the more their level goes up. So it's nice getting an employee with a high percentage rate to start with. But um, over time, they'll kind of level themselves up from working on the equipment uh, in your plant. Our next worker is Nicholas. He helps with the dump truck. He provides a movement speed increase and a malfunction rate reduction as well. And we have Janya, which works on the trommel to duplex jig sluice boxes. So what's really nice is they, uh, they can swap out the minor mosses if they're getting too full. And then they also help with performance as they level up which is a great trait and last we have ira which is the mechanic of the wash plant uh what they do is they work on the equipment and try to keep it healthy and as they level up they get quicker and quicker about doing this so great to have a mechanic on board hopefully we can level them up really quick and really help uh reduce the cost of repairs and fixing stuff speaking of reducing costs of repairs i managed to find a bunch of issues with my equipment accidentally i decided to pull out the part analyzer gun while i was doing some work i thought uh, you know my hope was uh 12 percent on the shaker and I, I was like okay you know so i decided to look around a little bit and try to figure out if there was anything else that was having durability issues as well i was caught off guard by this honestly um wasn't really expecting it so what we opted to do was run out and just buy a new hose to uh fix it so the process was pretty easy once i figured it out for the first time the thing i enjoy about gold rush is they don't make it very obvious and that's actually a good thing in my opinion they make you kind of think about, you know, 
what tool would work for the job? And if you can't figure it out like me, then you kind of just cycle through everything, hoping to figure out which one's which. I eventually was like, oh, you know, let's try um, the pipe wrench, and it worked. Um, so what you have to do is actually go over where the connectors would be and then select to unscrew them. Now, after I unscrew them, I decide to grab the hose. I'm really unsure what to do with it at this point. I'm like, oh, let's go throw it in here. And then I remember like, oh yeah, I can just set it down for now. I don't need to worry about it. I actually need to get this back in there. So the process is the same here. What we do is we grab out the pipe wrench and we actually screw the hose in. The process is pretty simple. Just gotta hold the button down and let it do its job. Now, this is actually a fun little mechanic. Uh, you know, it's something that you don't think about until things, either you catch it by accident like I do, or you realize uh, things are breaking. <laughs> so if we put it in there. Uh, the durability is 100% now. So actually, I start going over my entire wash plant, trying to see if there's things that I missed, uh, maybe that I don't see that could possibly break. And I ended up at the trommel, and I said, oh, there's a trommel chain, uh, the chain that helps spin it. And it's at a, it was low durability. So I'm just like, okay, so we need to pop this off too. Once again, cycling through my tools, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to do it. And it was the crowbar. We just pop it off there. So we set it down there and I went down to my duplex jigs as well and found out that the pumps down here, uh, have durability as well. And we need to replace them. So kind of checking them all out, seeing if there's anything weird between all four of them, but it turns out they're all pretty low durability at this point. So we have to run into the store, we run the trommel chain back and we just pop it right on. Pretty easy fix right then and there. I got a little cute and thought maybe there was a tool or something I had to screw in, but it turns out you just put it right in place. Now when it comes to the duplex jigs, what you need to do is actually use your crowbar and pop them off. So pretty simple process. You just use the crowbar, pop them off, and then you go throw them somewhere. And we'll end up having to do this for all four uh, pumps. Because the last thing, is, last thing we need to do is just replace like two of them of the four and have two break in the middle of a production run. So as you can see, easy peasy, pop off four. And we grab the new ones and we're going to toss them on, onto the duplex jigs. I should mention that these uh, low durability parts, I ended up just throwing into the cell area and selling them for some quick, cheap cash. Nothing crazy, but, you know, it refunds the, gives us a couple bucks back, basically. Since it's been a little bit, let's quickly recap how our wash plant works. So we load the dirt into letter A right there, which is the shaker. It rolls off any large stones and medium-sized stones or anything like that uh, will roll off a B. And the pay dirt and the good stuff will roll through C, which is our one of our sluice boxes. As it rolls through C, it rolls into the trommel, which is labeled as letter D. And then all the material gets washed in there as well, and it falls through to our sluice boxes, letter E. And then the rest of that runs through the duplex jigs at the bottom, where it kind of works through with ball bearings. It falls into buckets. And at it as well, we uh, put some hog pans at the bottom to catch any leftover gold to really make sure that we're getting everything that we can. So let's take a look at a sped up process of cleaning out the plant after I'm done uh, dumping dirt into it and getting everything up to the wash area. So we start off in the sluice box that runs from the shaker down to the trommel. And what we're doing is we're just going to dig out all that dirt and throw it in a bucket. And when that process is completed, I usually just run it up to the separator, dump it in, and then I take the bucket back to the sluice box. After that, I grab a... Um, Right, and I throw all the buckets in from the duplex jig and then I'll run those up to the area and just toss them down for now. After that we need to get the mosses and the mats up to the top there so what we'll do is we'll actually grab a transport box and toss everything in. One thing I started doing that I'm not going to show but I actually started putting a new set of mats in after I pulled the old ones out um, just to kind of make the process easier for me when it came to getting everything restarted rather than cleaning these mats and then putting them all back in. I take them up there and I put the new mats in so I don't have to worry about everything. So here we are back up at the um, cleaning area. And what I've been doing is I've kind of just been filling up the separator 
uh, as high as it can go and letting everything run and then stop it and starting it as needed to clear out the gold bucket. Um, the magnetite separator, um, the magnetite itself doesn't fill up as fast as the gold does. So it's kind of just easier to um, fill it up and then run it. So everything's filled up for now. What we'll do is actually get everything started individually and get our water running. All right, and now that every, those are up and running, we'll get the wave table started. And I have no water. So I got to go back over here and actually switch out my pipes. Now this is what I do for water. People might do it differently, and that's totally fine, but this is what I opt to do. I just switch the hoses around. <laughs> All right, so we'll get it started up here. And I can see how fast the left bucket's filling up. Uh, that is the gold bucket. And then on the right is the separated um, magnetite material. So you can see gold fills up very, very fast. So we stick around and make sure that we stop it before it completely fills up. Then we'll grab that bucket, run it over to the wave table, and dump it in. And then what we'll do is actually we'll just repeat this process until this is all done. So after I finish up working with the separator, then we need to wash all our mats out and get that material separated out and put into the wave table as well. So I usually opt to put in a bunch of small, all my hog pan mats in first. And then I'll usually toss in an extra uh, two uh, mo minor mosses just to fill up the whole machine. And then once that's filled up, um, we'll go ahead and get it started here in a second. All right, so now that's running and filling up the bucket on the front. All right, so we'll let that run, and then what happens is as soon as it's done, we'll take that and once again restart the process of separating it and put it in the wave table. So this is me wrapping up my first uh, clean out where I actually felt like it was worthwhile making gold bars. So we end up with five gold bars at 72 ounces each, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, we're going to definitely make some money on this one. So we'll actually head over here to the bank and sell them off and see what we end up with. So we're pulling up onto the shop now, we'll hop out, go check what the selling rate is. So 85000 per gold bar, which is really nice actually. So it's definitely going to put some money back in our pocket. We actually started off with $14,000 when we got here. Uh, let's see, after selling these off, we're going to end up with about 428000 just a little bit over. So I decided to include this recording because this is some of the fun I get to have while I'm trying to do stuff in this game. So I'm trying to fill up the generator here. And as you can see, I can't get the bar, or not the bar, but the I can't get the pump over there. So I'm like, okay, I got to get in my truck and I'm just so tired of trying or frustrated at this point. I just jump in and I'm trying to move it here. And you can see I'm trying to wiggle it back and forth. And then I get this notification that my fuel nozzle has been destroyed. And I'm just like, it takes me a second to process what's going on here. And you can see I'm still not processing. I'm still just trying to get it in place. And so then I hop off and I'm like, oh, you know, I got to turn my lights off and stuff, not realizing what's going on behind me. So now I'm looking at the situation and I'm saying, oh my gosh, all my gas is draining out of here. So I have to immediately run off and quickly buy an emergency uh, hose from the equipment store and have it shipped over, which is not cheap, by the way. When you're ordering things from the tablet, uh, it can cost a little bit. So after spending a little bit of money, we've run off here and we're going to grab the hose from the uh, pickup spot and we're going to run it over here. Now, no one ever kind of trains you on what to do regarding parts and stuff like that. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, we're kind of just winging it, <laughs> trying to figure everything out. Now I'm still losing gas here. And so I got to toss that down and I got to get my uh, wrench out on oh, my screwdriver and my wrench. And we're going to go ahead and pop that off. Now, one thing I didn't realize before I started doing all this is that when you actually unscrew the hose and remove a broken one, it stops all your gas from draining. So I should have definitely done that sooner. <laughs> Lost about 11% of gas, but thankfully it's not too much in the grand scheme of the thing. We can move on quite easily from that with just a little, like an ounce or two of gold. 
So next up was all the issues we had with the excavator and the hydraulic hoses on that. Now, it's not fun when this happens, but it's going to happen. Especially when you're a rookie like me, that's kind of learning everything. So what we got to do is actually get another hose, and it's actually the same one uh, that you buy for the shaker. So it's pretty easy to find uh, for me in the equipment store because I've already had to look for it once. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab a new one. Now, funny thing here is that uh, there's a hydraulic hose and there's a reinforced hydraulic hose. And I didn't know which one to buy, so I opted for the cheaper one. And the reason I say I don't know why I didn't know which one to buy is because I don't know what I own and don't own. So in earlier episodes, you saw that I rented stuff and some stuff I bought. Well, there's no really easy way for me to tell what I own and don't own. I would have to go back to recordings or I potentially would have to try to sell it and see if I get money back or no money back. So that would tell me if it's a rental or not. It would have been nice if they implemented a system where you could be like, okay, you know, here's what I'm renting. Here's what I own. But unfortunately, that's not in the game right now. So we're going to go ahead and run over here and grab the hydraulic hose. And once we have that, we'll go ahead and toss it in our truck and take it over to the excavator. All right, so we're back at the excavator now, and I actually have to get the bucket towards the ground here so I can actually reach the hose and work on it. So now that we get the bucket uh, down to the ground, we can actually grab the new hose and begin working on replacing the old one and getting the new one on. And just like the shaker, we're going to use the wrench to unscrew and put the new one on and screw back on. And you can see I'm actually getting blasted with uh, hydraulic fluid as we're working on this. And I'm very surprised that my guy can reach up so dang high uh, when working on this. I'm really appreciative that they let us do that because I couldn't imagine trying to walk across this arm and work on it. All right, so we got it unscrewed and we just popped it off and we'll pop the new one on. Oh, missed. Little finicky. All right, there we go. And once again, we'll go, like I said, we'll screw this one back on and we should be good to go. Now, I don't know if the reinforced one looks different, but I'm assuming it maybe has a pattern or something that shows that it's reinforced. I guess we'll find out in the future, probably. So let's take a look at this one over here and see how it's doing. Oh, geez, that's only a 3%. Uh, yeah, that's not good. So let's go ahead and actually just pop this one off now. Yeah, so that would have been bad if we just replaced the one hose and kept working, because then that means we would have had a failure probably within the next, like, three or four minutes. So, uh, I'll get those popped off here. And as I mentioned before, we'll just take those to the cell area and sell them. All right, and then we'll pop this hose on there. So now that we've got our excavator uh, fixed up a little bit, uh, we should be good for another couple hours of digging and moving and grooving. After everything we've been through, I actually got another surprise here. Um, I was finishing my last load of dirt, and I get this notification that the trauma roller has broken. I don't know what specifically the trauma roller is. And so I have to run down here and start figuring out what happened. So I'm checking out the chain and I'm actually looking at the trauma as a whole. I was assuming that it was this big pipe up here on top, but it wasn't. So I'm kind of confused and I'm still looking around now. And I have this part analyzer right, hoping something pops up. And I noticed this like brief flash of red from the right side here. So I'm actually trying to pinpoint it. And that's when I noticed that they have these little rollers. And so I'm assuming that what happens is as the trommel uh, turns, it's on these little track with these rollers that allow it to turn like that. Now, the very hard thing here is trying to get to these things. First of all, you can see me jump in and then I just come to the other side and decide to take a peek at these things. So checking the durability, I see it's actually super low on most of these. So that means I got to pop them off and get new ones. So I already ran off to the store and got new ones. And we're going to slap these bad boys on. 
Uh, getting them off wasn't hard. We just needed a crowbar, and you, they just pop right off, and you can pop new ones in. And you can kind of see the ridges on the trommel itself, so that's where we're uh, trying to fit them in here is on these little ridges so the trommel spins without, you know, issue. So there's six of them, so it's pretty uh, quick and easy fix. They weren't very expensive either. See me. This edge right here just gives you so much trouble when you're trying to balance on it and work. I ended up trying to, uh, for the last one, just doing it from the bottom, but a lot of it required jumping and trying to balance on the beam. All right, so now that, that everything's fixed, I can restart my water pump here, and then I'll restart the wash plant. And then we'll just turn off the uh, tables and stuff like that that we're not using currently. I wanted to show you some of the upgrades at the blacksmith here. So what we do is as we take all this magnetite that we're earning, we can actually turn it into upgrades. The upgrades we can get are uh, reducing the time to make a bar, reducing the cost, reducing how much gold we lose, and increasing the size of the bar, which are all nice things here. Um, reducing the time makes it so we just get the bar quicker. Uh, cost is makes it cheaper. How much gold we lose is actually a really nice thing. We lose less gold as we make bars. And making bars even bigger makes it so we can turn our gold around even quicker. Let me show you what it looks like here. So with all the first row upgrades, we can create a gold bar that is 80 ounces. Uh, only costs about 4K to make. Seven minutes to produce. And we only lose about 4% of gold. So overall, we'll get a 76 ounce bar of gold, which is great for us. After finishing up the bars, we come to sell them really quick, just three at 76 ounces each, and we end up making about $271,000 off of this. So great win for us. We can actually use that to buy our next parcel of land. I should say rent our next parcel of land or lease would be the best term. So we have a few options here, uh, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, do I want Pine Valley? Do I want Rivertown? And I think we're going to end up taking uh, Rivertown. I picked Rivertown because in the end I wanted to have extra money left over. So I can use that extra $300,000 to help move everything over and potentially buy some better equipment uh, to help make more gold quickly. I don't want to be in a situation where we're using older equipment, getting, you know, just a little bit more gold. When we can opt to, you know, get better equipment and get tons more gold, especially because we're moving to a new, new piece of land that has more gold overall. So let's hop in the truck and we'll actually head over to the new parcel and check out everything. So here we are on the new parcel. Um, we're going to head over here to the tent and take a better look at the land itself. Now this has more gold than old Arnold, so it'll be a lot better for us. So over there is our uh, shed and our maintenance shack to sell and buy areas. And down here is actually uh, where we can dig hoping to find a ton more gold than old Arnold there. Yep, it's going to be fun. Um, and this is actually the wash plant area, so we're going to be moving everything over to here and getting it all set up. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you enjoyed this content, uh, like and subscribe. It really helps me out with my channel and growing. So thank you once again for everything. Please have a great day, and I'll catch you guys later.